Uh, well, I came to, I started a little bit in the ambulance ride from here to Richmond. And when I got to Richmond, snapped into it. I just had no clue what was going on. And it was just really hard adjusting to everything. I couldn't remember everything at, at first. Everything like my entire life before. Just like long growing up and everything. At the Naval Hospital, he's going through um, occupational therapy and I believe physical therapy. Occupational therapy is working with his functional abilities to be able to do everything for himself as much as he can, as independently as he can. And that may be with compensatory methods of performing that activity. Um, to start off with, when we first received Michael into the clinic, we were still working on range of motion extremities. Uh, certainly working with uh, cognitive skills, uh, relearning um, eye-hand coordination, relearning uh, cognitive skills such as uh, fine motor uh, control. The accident was four and a half months ago and uh, Michael was just discharged this week for the first time. So he has been an inpatient for four and a half months. He's 21 years old, um, worked out every day, was, just was really having a great, old, great time in life, I think doing a good um, job in his job. And so things completely changed. And uh, we were in intensive care for 10 days at Virginia Beach. We came to uh, Portsmouth. We were here in intensive care. And then he spent seven weeks following that on the floor. He had a TBI, which is a traumatic brain injury. And that, um, he doesn't remember any of that time. He doesn't remember two months following the accident. He also had, um, he's probably had eight surgeries uh, as far as orthopedic surgeries. He had a feeding tube inserted. He's had all kinds of things. Um, the time here, it was just a blur. Very long, long days. He required one-on-one -on -one attention. He had to have uh, Corman in the room with him at all times. We were transferred then on June 23rd to the Polytrauma Rehabilitation Center in Richmond, Virginia. And there, it just seemed like there was a turnaround. It took a few days. He was um, still disoriented, but getting a little more uh, with it. And so he had intensive rehab there. He would have um, kinesiotherapy, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, and recreational therapy. So he had very, very busy days, but they all kind of just brought him back. And um, each day he became a little more independent, and now we're just working on getting the bones fixed. Um, he had had some pretty devastating injuries, the most serious of which was his closed head injury, which rendered him unconscious and in a coma. Um, he also had some trauma to his arms that Dr. Rulin, um, who's our upper extremity hand surgeon, uh, my colleague is going to talk to you about a little bit later, that involved his uh, left forearm and his right arm and some hand injuries. And then he had a knee. A fracture dislocation on the left side. He also had some pretty bad soft tissue trauma to his back where he had uh, bleeding under the skin. So he really had some pretty devastating injury which is not unfortunately uncommon when we see motorcycle injuries. And due to the severe injuries of his forearm, uh, I was uh, consulted uh, as our upper extremity uh, specialist here. And then because of the injury to the ligaments that occurred through here, we pinned the two bones together. And then finally, uh, we uh, performed uh, internal fixation with pins uh, on the uh, hand. I broke uh, both arms. My left arm got the worst of it. And I broke my left femur and my left knee and a couple ribs and uh, spinal damage too, but that is all healed. And I had back wounds too. And the worst part about it was the TBI, which is traumatic brain injury. That's, I don't remember, that's how I don't remember the two months. And a couple weeks before the accident, I don't even remember. I've had 10 surgeries so far, 
And the first eight, it was when I was out of it, but it was uh, the two months that I don't remember, thankfully, because surgeries are really tough on me now. It's cause, just because the brain injury, and I'm just scared of everything now. They never used to phase me or anything, but now it's a lot different. And the rehabs, the rehab's nice, but I, I, it's just real painful after surgery and dealing with everything. Because I, I make a bunch of steps forward, and I have to, I get surgery to help it out, to, which will make it better in the long run, but it just always sets me back, but I make it through it. I was signed up to go through the Navy safety course, but I didn't make it to it, so I didn't do that. But I mean, uh, riding, it, w it was fun and enjoyable, but just not worth all this. Just, I never saw this coming. I don't know, but five of my friends have got rid of their bikes, thankfully, because uh, just because of what happened, and they don't want to go through it either. And yeah, I hope no one else has to go through this. It's really rough. I don't think anyone goes through the exact same circumstances. Uh, we were on this polytrauma rehab, re rehab center. There were motorcycle accidents, but there were also a lot of um, people coming back from the war. Everyone had a traumatic brain injury and everyone um, recovers differently. We're very, very, very fortunate. Michael seems to be 100% cognitively and um, neurologically, so we were very blessed with that. Um, just never, never give up and um, especially the caregivers. Uh, when people have brain injuries, they are not themselves. He was very confused. He was a lot of work, a lot of work, but don't ever give up. I'll never do anything that my parents tell me not to again, because they didn't know I had a motorcycle either. And made the big mistake. But I'll listen to him now, that's for sure.